the Creality CR10 Mini. In everything we loved about the CR10, without the one thing that we were actually excited about in the CR10. And if that sounds like a bad idea to you, it's actually not as bad as it might seem. I got this CR10 from my friends at Gearbest, and it came to me, uh, same as the CR10, it was easy to assemble and it worked right out of the box. I ran a couple of test prints on it and they worked fine. I assembled this at the Makerspace, or rather, some of my friends at the Makerspace assembled it for me, ran through some test prints, and took those test prints home. So sorry I don't have any to show you. But it worked like a CR-10 does, straight out of the box. No problems. Worked like a charm. And I was really, really pleased with it. But it is a Mini. Now, it's cheaper than the regular CR-10. It's about $200 cheaper than the regular CR-10. But the build area is, yeah, it's considerably smaller, especially in the width. It's it's not nearly as wide as a CR-10, uh, length-wise. Width-wise, it's a little bit shorter, and height-wise, it's a little bit shorter. It's still, though, a really big build area. It's a bigger build area than my ANET AA. It's much bigger than my Replicator 2, which at the time they were bragging about how big its build area was. It's a It's still... Actually, for a 3D printer, and especially for a 3D printer for this price, a very large build area. It's just smaller than the CR-10. Now, I made a CR-10 review video a little while ago, and when I made that video, I was so pleased and excited with my experience with the CR-10 that while I called it the problem with the CR-10, I basically didn't say, I, I basically said the, it had no problems, it was a stupid question of software, but since that time I've had more time to consider the CR-10 and I have found some legitimate problems with it, and this Mini also has those problems. So here it is, the real problems with the CR-10 and the CR-10 Mini. Number one, the feed tube, the, the feed path runs way too close to the z-axis screw. You kind of need to take and move the filament back a little bit so that it feeds kind of in at an angle. And you can print little bits on here to redirect it so that it doesn't come that close. But why does it move that close in the first place? I mean, I don't expect them to move it out because that would put a lot of weight on there. Uh, but couldn't they, I don't know, flip the motor around the other direction? Mind you, that would make it hard to, to squeeze to release the pressure. Couldn't they put the arm on the other side then so we're squeezed? I don't know. You know what? On the Mini, they've only got one Z-screw on the one side. The other side is open. Couldn't they have moved the Z-screw to the far side so that we didn't have this problem? I don't know. It's, it's a silly thing. And like I say, there are fixes, even fixes that the CR-10 can print for free. But I really don't like that design decision. Number two, the electronics box. Not, not that it's separate. I mean, that's weird. Why didn't they put it underneath like everybody else? But the electronics inside of it are maxed out. There are no additional ports. There's no room for adding additional functionality. So forget about auto le adding auto leveling or filament runout sensors or anything to the electronics. Now, you can overcome some of that by getting a Raspberry Pi on here and then putting like a filament runout sensor and running it to the Raspberry Pi. It's a little bit harder to configure, but that might solve your problem. But I don't like that they even gave us that problem. Their cable management system is, um, it's, it's just, it's a mess. And uh, I really would appreciate if they would design it in such a way that the, the cables were managed a little bit more than just a bunch of loose bundles that all just run to the electronics box. But strangely enough, it's not bad. In fact, be, by putting the filament feed right here, they kind of force you with the filament here to have the electronics box here. And so all the cables are kind of confined to these this space. If it sounds like every time I'm trying to come up with something to complain about this, I'm also coming up with a counter argument really quick, that's because that's kind of what it's like to have a CR-10. Yeah, it's got problems, but they're not deal breakers. Not a one of them are a deal breaker. And for the price and for this 3D printer, it's a great 3D printer. Now, 
I do have a CR-10S that I will be reviewing in March Madness. So look forward to that, but I still have to unbox that and see how it's working. So that'll probably be at the end. But yeah, not all of these, all, not all of these are going to be negative reviews. The, the CR-10 Mini, yeah, I can recommend it because it's a CR-10 and it works great out of the box and I haven't had a single, and I've, I haven't heard a lot of people complaining about their CR-10s. They, apparently they are all solid machine, not all, but the majority of them are solid machines. So I, I, I continue to recommend. The CR-10 remains on my recommended list. Now I've got some other printers that might knock that off, but it doesn't, you'll see. Anyways, I want to thank you very much for watching. I want to thank you for uh, checking me out during March Madness. And I hope you're looking forward to more reviews. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. And remember, safety first. I'll see you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The Beginner's Guide to the 3D Printing Galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon. I feel like there was three. That, that, uh, well, I, I suppose it was these cables. Um, uh, yeah, I guess so. My fingers are so cold.